Grab your fruit roll up. <laughs> okay. And today we're going to talk about what to do when you're not sure where to go, where to take the next step. You're 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 a little bit unsure Isn't of that... direction. And I think there's times when we all need direction, but the scripture is going to bear this out for us today. Oh, I'm excited about this. Yeah, we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. Pastor Jason, it's good to have you with us today. And uh, today we got a scripture day, we're going to pray every day, we got dad jokes at the end. Oh, dad it's jokes. It's going to be fun. Dad joke Monday. Dad joke Monday, and uh, we're going to have a good time with it. If you're a talking. new subscriber, yes. type in where you're from, we like to read that on Wednesdays. And have fun in the comments. Put them all in there. Your favorite Christmas part of a movie, the Christmas vacation, I want to hear some of those to read them off on Wednesday. Oh, nice. Okay. I love all of those things. It's good. It's good. It's good. I always do that. Today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 12. You slimy. And verse 1. Swiney. He does an entire phrase. You're talking about Chevy Chase in, in uh, the Griswolds yeah. vacation, Christmas wait, vacation. Wait, when he fixed the banister? <laughs> <laughs> fixed the newel post. I didn't even know it was called a newel post. I didn't either. <laughs> it was wobbly, so he cuts it off with a, lot a of chainsaw. Sap. A lot of sap. He's turning the pages. A little sticky, a lot of sap. <laughs> Look, Watch kids, this clip. Look, kids, a deer. David is one of the greats of knowing and seeing that God was working for him. No matter what was going on around him, he was always the person that said, God, my hope is in you. I'm hoping in you, God. I know that so many things are against me right now, and it's so dark of a time. But God, you are a bright light in the midst of my darkness. David is a really good example of somebody yeah. who God didn't lay out the plan for him. Yeah. But he, he hey, was, you're going to be king. When? <laughs> it just goes dark. It just goes silent after Nothing. that. Nothing. Nothing. Not, hey, today you're going to go fight Goliath, so get get prepared. It wasn't yeah. like, hey, the king is going to try and kill you and throw a spear at you. But, right? It's not, hey. You're going to run from the king for years. Years. Hey, today, later, they're going to come and steal all your stuff. But tomorrow. And your men are going to want to kill you. Tomorrow, you're going you're to be put in place to be the king. Yeah, there was no plan. There was no calendar. There was, and I know some people out there, you're, you're watching this, and you're like, you're a calendar person. You right. want it on the calendar. You want a schedule. My brother, my I'm that way. Are... Like, well, what's happening at 7 p.m.? <laughs> what time is dinner exactly? Yeah. Like, Jason's a very, this is where we're like, I'm regimented. I, I, I talked about schedule. that discernment, how like, I'm real, like, we'll have an idea. And when do I want to do it? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> With the revival of Arizona, you know, we just finished October 20th and I woke up the, the next morning, October 21st, getting ready. To, we got to plan another event. Yeah. And I said to the Lord, okay, when's the next event? And he goes, not yet. That's all I heard. Not yet. Okay. That, that, that drives you nuts. Yeah. It was just like, like, it was almost like he was saying, shh. Like, you just did one. Let's just take, can we just have a break? <laughs> God, the heavens can like, we have a little break right yeah, now? Yeah. A little breather? Oh, because we got more events to plan next year. And I hope he gives you like one it. week. He's like, next Friday. Genesis chapter I want 12. That. That'd be my dream. No, he's not going to do that to me. <laughs> Please, Lord, do that one for me. Well, actually, the, the, you bring that up. I'm trying to create a, a scenario where we can do flash revivals, where we can set up, we can have very oh, little wow. planning. We just set up anywhere. Who are you? In a few hours. That's a without, scotty idea. Without any announcements at all. And Does do that it. make you like... I just think it would really hype up the valley if all of a sudden you just saw on Instagram uh, worship revival tonight. Like at Pioneer Park or wherever. That's the flash mob. That's the flash, no, no, flash revival. No, no, this will hit you hard because I know it's... my brother. Like the flash one is good, but Jason's going to plan his flash one. No, I'm, I'm writing down the dates for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They're... I thought Jason, it was going to be like. You way... won't know they're planned, but I'll know they're planned. Everyone's like, oh my God, it's so impromptu. Jason's like, yeah, we've been impromptu to this for six months. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> I'm not listening to you anymore. Because if I'm like, like, you'd wake up on a, on a Friday and go, tonight we're doing it. No, <laughs> no, it'll be planned. You plan, but you won't know about the plan. No, put it in the comments. How funny it is that he plans his impromptu. <laughs> so, I'll bet you even an impromptu date, he's like three weeks out, he's like, all right. I'm but that playing. is impromptu. If I say in two weeks we're going to do one, that's impromptu <laughs> oh, that to me. Big. No, that's like you saying tomorrow. Because like, <laughs> we, we plan six, right now we've been six months out. This is when they, like during COVID though, Jason, like it was, it was my world. Yeah, because you didn't know what was going to, the government was going to so announce something So it'd be like Monday week. and Jason, and I'm like, all right, we have to do this Sunday. And he's like, yeah, we do. 
Well, and it was so... Every Monday, our governor would announce some new thing about like what was happening with the COVID thing, and you had and to go through and read it all, Jason and I was just like, money. all right, well, this God. is what we're doing. Yeah, we're outside church this weekend. We got a screen. God put everything in place. He did. Anyway, God we, gave we're me a great grace. balance, because there's times I want to jump, and she's like, but the, but the point is, is, is that we don't God, God's not on your calendar. Right, and I think that's that, I think that's a strong move because I don't think he should be on your calendar. Wouldn't I think it, you should be on his calendar. Wouldn't it have been great if God would have said, "Hey, COVID's coming in a year. You're gonna yeah. do an outdoor. It gives you one year to prepare. Yeah, let's get you a screen. Right. Let's get everything all set up." And what's crazy is that it's sometimes very rare you'll see God go to no one and say, "Hey, but he needed to build a boat." Took him a year. Took him. Was it just a year? I thought it was like a hundred years. Hundred years. Yeah, I thought it was like a long time. Yeah, I think it was a hundred years. But was it a hundred years? But every day he went out and built it, and even then he didn't know when the flood's coming. Wow. His wife is like, uh, what are you, what, what's going on? It's not coming until I'm done. <laughs> she's like, it seems a little... <laughs> I wonder how many days like he was just like, she's like, hey, uh, what are you doing? You going to build a boat? <laughs> <laughs> I believe our life depends around, on it. Sitting around? <laughs> okay, Genesis chapter 12, verse oh, 1. We have a scripture. We're having fun. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. That's so crazy. And really, that, that phrase to me really kind of says it all. No, that's so good, Jason. I want you to go somewhere. <laughs> and you go, where? Oh, I'll show you. Um, but can't you tell me now? No. So he had to go to his wife and say, listen, we're leaving. And she goes, where are we going? And he goes... <laughs> Okay, so that's the thing. I don't actually know where we're going. I just know that God's going to show us where once we leave. And sometimes we just, we make things stories and we don't put ourselves in it. I can't imagine telling that to my wife. Because she go, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Why, 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 why do I have to leave where? my family? Where? Well, ask him, go ask him again then. Uh, I did, and he just said he's going to show us. Show us what? Well, show us where? What are we going? Are we going to Egypt? Are we going to what? Like, yeah. what, what's the plan here? Yeah. And you go, I don't know. He's a light unto our feet as we talked about. Uh, last week, that it's just, this is how God does things, because he so desperately is wanting us to walk our world by faith. There's no faith if he tells us everything up ahead. There's no trust in God. There's right. no hope in God. There's, right, we, we miss out on the things that are so important in life. If you wanted your miracle, you had to believe that Jesus was the Messiah, and that he had a miracle in you had to believe that that, that was going to happen. When Jesus said, get up and walk, if he wanted that miracle, he was going to have to get up. Even yes. though he couldn't. He, and he didn't, he, he, the Bible doesn't say he said, I can't walk, that's why I'm laying here. You know? Yeah. That's the normal response to get up and walk. Hey, get up and walk. Pick up your mat. I, bro, I can't. Like, I can't walk. My legs don't work. Right. So in order for them to just be obedient and get up, they had to have faith. So faith is what moves the miraculous into my life. The oh, faith is so what good. manifests God's glory into the earth, from heaven to earth. And, and he wants us to walk by faith, to stand in faith, to take steps of faith. And so he does things like that. Hey, leave, and I'll show you where we're going. Uh, uh, okay. That's a trusting thing. And, and that's what we said at the beginning. Said the, I said the secret to living a life when you don't know where to go is this. Have faith in God. Trust that God is working on your behalf. Yeah. He's working for you. And I really... I, and it's important to practice this as we go into 2023. It's just speaking it. You know, people that are around me always hear me saying, oh my God, look what God did. God, God always working for me. God's always doing something yeah. for me. God's always, uh, right, something's happening. And I, I talk about this yesterday some. Um, we say, well, God will turn it around or God will, but I like to say God is. There's a difference between will and is. Yeah, it's timing. Right, will, well, someday. He's working it out. But he is working right now. God will work it out. No, God is working it out right now. He is yeah. constantly and in some working cases, in has, my favor. Has worked it out. Is some, in some cases, like with your healing, he has healed you. That's so good, Jason. Right? God sent his word and it has healed you. He, already, he either is or he already did. He already has Holly waiting for me at the church. I already scheduled her to be there on the Sunday that I'm going to come back to church. He already, he already had it all lined Oh, up. when you met her. When I met her. I'm not, I don't know where you were. I was like, the, I'm going picturing back, you I'm coming going here to preach. Years, 32 okay. years ago, okay. the first Sunday that I really came back to church, he had scheduled her six months out to sing a special. That's right. And she had she had not sang a special before it, or after. It would have been cool if he'd have told me six months earlier. 
Wow. Hey. There's going to be a girl. Yeah, listen. This is going to be a Just relax. Life. Yeah. Be fine. Yep. Everything You'll hang up on her one day, but she's going to forgive you. <laughs> that was last she won't week. even know. <laughs> She'd be good. She'd love her right? all year. Right, Matt? We're worried about him, aren't we? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, Psalms 37 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You thought, see, you thought you were just going wherever. You thought you were wandering. You were, you were like, God, I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going. Like, I got to go to work today. You don't realize that God ordered that. Wow. He planned it. He's got you in that job because he's, he's got you learning something. There's something, that, someone you're going to meet. There's something that you're going to you're going to learn and grow into. The, so God is, has got Joseph in prison because he knows he's going to take him from prison to a dream come true life. Oh, I love it. So... Joseph's steps could have been like, oh, why am I in prison? Uh, what a mess. I must have took a wrong turn somewhere. Not realizing that, no, God was ordering his steps. And so you just got to trust that where I am and what I'm doing, I'm just going to be great where I am and what I'm doing like Joseph, because God has ordered my steps. Ordered my steps. You're trying. So you say, well, I'm not a good man. Yes, you are. God says you're righteous. You believe in Jesus? You're trying. You're watching a Bible study for crying out loud of all the things you could you could be <laughs> all watching. All the things on YouTube. Yeah, trust me, you're good. But but God calls you righteous because yeah. you believe in Jesus. You're 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 on the coattails of Jesus' righteousness. You get it for free. And right. so you are a good man. And you God, are a good woman. And I think that the one of the big secrets of life is really trusting and putting your hope in God mm. that He is working on your behalf. He's doing some things behind the scenes. Even when people leave, that's all right. God's got new people coming into my life. Even when you got the layoff, yeah, God's got a better job and God is already bringing His provisions into my world. That it is a life where we step in faith in whatever's going on because the world is dark. Mm -hmm. There's dark times, there's storms in life, but here's what I do know. That God is working for me all the time. Mm. Uh, partner with us. We encourage you. Did you receive something today? Yeah, I've been so impressed if you did, with the Bible our partners. Says... Our partners are really stepping up and really allowing us to, to propel this message and touch lives and change the world. And we want to say thank you for that. And uh, if you're not partnering, I encourage you to partner, even if it's a buck. It could be a buck a week. It could be five bucks. It could be a buck an episode, whatever it is. We pay for so many useless things out there. Uh, you know, we do. We pay for a lot of useless things. Got, you ever go through your subscriptions? I'm yeah. Sure, I'm like, how, what are we doing? Well, because sometimes the kids will subscribe you to something that you didn't. Right. Need. Why am I subscribed to Crunchyroll? <laughs> don't know why. I don't know why anybody. You're the only subscriber to Crunchyroll. It's a TV series, a TV show, like uh, streaming service that does mostly anime. Really? Yeah. So you got Crunchyroll. Which, if you if your kids are into anime, parents, you have to be on top of this, just like you're on top of their music, because there are some anime things that there's they no have bueno. no bueno. Right. And then, there's, and then there's plenty of stuff that's totally Avatar, harmless. And one of the greatest... Uh, harmless and fine things. One of the greatest ones I've ever watched. Yeah, the Avatar of the Airbender. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. You, he talked magic. To me, he talked to me for four years magic. before I finally sat down and watched it with Savvy. Like, it's a magic show. That was the best one and I've ever I, watched. And it's not, I don't say magic like an evil show. I just mean it's, it's a wonderful show. Yeah. Anyway... Uh, you want to pray over I don't think it's evil. I don't think it's evil at all. Somebody's going to watch it and call me evil now. Oh my gosh, that's fine. They get, and it's good. They it's fictional. It, they would have made it anyway. It's, it's not it's real magic. It's a story. Yes. We get it. Yes. What now? Do you want to pray? pray? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for everybody watching this and within the sound of my voice that, Lord, your favor's on them today. That, Lord, they're going through their day full of energy. That sickness is falling off them. They are healed. Walking healed in Jesus' name. Their bodies are quickened by your Holy Spirit. They are blessed when they go in, and they are blessed when they go out. Your face is looking right at them, Lord. You are with them every step of the way. You are ordering their steps. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dad jokes. Oh, dad joke Monday. So at the airport last night, a woman passed out on the carousel, but slowly she came around. What? When did a joke become a dad joke? Mm -hmm. It will be apparent. So my dentist, right, I'm sitting in the chair there, he's all, and they asked the dumbest question. He's like, when did you floss last? And I'm like, bro, you were right there. <laughs> he got the floss. <laughs> my inflatable house got a puncture yesterday. Good. Now I'm living in a flat. <laughs> okay. Whew. 
Watch this clip. David is one of the greats of knowing and seeing that God was working for him. No matter what was going on around him, he was always the person that said, God, my hope is in you. I'm hoping in you, God. I know that so many things are against me right now, and it's so dark of a time. But God, you are a bright light in the midst of my darkness. That many may fall around me, but God, I know that you are with me, and that's all that I need to know. And then we get into Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads. Somebody say leads. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cut runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He walked through way darker times I think than any one of us could possibly imagine. It's interesting that he had two scriptures there in the beginning about God leading me, lead me under the path of righteousness, lead me beside still waters. And then he immediately goes right into that we walk through the shadow of the valley of death. And I think that we don't realize oftentimes that in the process of him leading me on the path, on the path is those shadows, is those dark times, is those problems and those circumstances in our life. But if we will realize that God is with me in the midst of all of that, and I don't have to be fearful, I don't have to be stressed out about where is the rent going to be coming from. God's like, I'm working on your behalf behind the scenes to bring the rent into your life. i got to put a whole lot of things in places. I've never failed you before, and I won't fail you now. That what's happening as I'm walking through the shadow of the valley of death, that it is building my faith and my expectation because God's saying, I've got bigger problems and mountains for you to conquer with me together. And we got to be able to conquer these right here. So we got to be able to build your faith and your expectation. If I can lead you to the mountaintop, I'm going to have to be able to have you have the problems in the valley and be able to trust with me because you won't be able to part a Red Sea if you can't throw a snake down on the ground and have it turn into a staff and have it turn into a snake. If you can't do this I can't take you to that. That yes, I realized that you had a rejection, but I wanted to show you that you always have an acceptance in me. That I'm always there with you. And yes, they ran away from you and they hurt you and they did mean things to you. But guess what? I brought you some new relationships, some right relationships in your life. You didn't know I was working on your behalf. You didn't know that the financial crisis you went through was building up some faith in you. And I was working to restore not just what's stolen, but seven times that what was stolen in your life. That God is working. Every problem, every negative circumstance, every setback, everything that we go through. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Be in church this weekend and digital Christmas cards. Type in hashtag wake up Christmas in that and we'll find them and put them on our I don't know where we're going to put them. We're going to use them somewhere. Yep. Anyway, have an epic, epic. We're going to sell them for money. <laughs> sell them for profit. I don't know how profitable that is. Yeah, well, no, we're going to make t-shirts. Oh, oh, that'd be cool. Actually, if we did that. You have to buy <laughs> if we wore, No, we're going to do that. If we wore on a show just a t-shirt with one of their... Just one picture. Up, 